To be clear, I'm filming this video before AMD has actually made an announcement regarding the 7800 XT and 7700 XT, it's widely expected to happen sometime later today. I don't know exactly when. However, videocards.com has already leaked apparently official slides from the presentation of the 7800 XT and the 7700 XT. Here we're seeing how their gaming performance stacks up against the competition. And uh, we're also getting a full official specs list. This is interesting because while we had most of the 7800 XT specs leaked early already, uh, the 7700 XT had been a lot uh, harder to track down in the rumor mill, and 54 compute units actually sounds pretty interesting. Also, it looks like videocards.com has at least some information about FSR 3, and uh, it looks like a bit of a look at AMD's own uh, reference model coolers for these GPUs. Now, if uh, well, the, the big thing that I can't find in any of this leaked information is the price, and that is going to be everything. So if AMD's official announcement later today comes out with a lot more information, including the price, expect another video from me at some point. But for now, I've got things to do today. I don't have access to any of this information early, to be clear. Uh, AMD has not sent me this stuff early. Uh, uh, so this is just, I found this at videocards.com. The sources will be in the video description. So first thing I want to mention here is that, well, on the specs of the RX 7800 XT, um, a lot of people would be disappointed in the fact that it has fewer compute units than the RX 6800 XT when you're looking at the overall specs here. And I've covered these leaked specs a, a lot on my channel anyway, and this doesn't uh, appear to be any big uh, surprises there. The 7700 XT, on the other hand, is 54 compute units, which first of all is, that's 54 is 90% of 60, meaning, uh, yes, we're also getting 12 gigabytes of VRAM on the 7700 XT instead of 16 gigabytes on the 7800 XT. Uh, but 12 gigabytes, I have shown in my testing, is very good right now. It's just a question of the increased longevity of usefulness of the 16. Um, but then also, again, 54 compute units out of 60, it's 90% of the performance, and the RX 6700 XT, the previous generation card, only had 40 compute units. So if we actually look at it like this, uh, we've got 54 compute units compared to the previous generation's 40 compute units. That is a 35% uplift in terms of just compute units. Now, that's not going to be a direct comparison of performance because we're talking about, you know, RDNA 2 versus RDNA 3. So we'll have to see what actually comes of that. But again, compared to the 7800 XT leaked results where a lot of people were disappointed that had fewer compute units than its RDNA 2 predecessor, the, six, the 7700 XT, on the other hand, has a 35% boost to its, um, uh, to its raw compute units, but again is on a uh, 12, giga, 12 gigabytes of VRAM, same as its predecessor, 16 gigabytes of VRAM, same as its predecessor, all of that. So there are all the specs right there, but the specs... Um, really are only interesting insofar as they lead to the uh, performance numbers. So that's where we get into these results. So again, these are performance numbers given by AMD themselves. So you have to understand that particular game sets can skew results, you know, particular places you test, settings, all of that. So we should not assume that this is exactly the same results that independent third-party reviews will get. However, um, uh, these all saying uh, that, uh, that this is done at native 1440p at max settings. And do note that some of these do specifically say RT on. Uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, RT Ultra, uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales, RT Very High, uh, F123 RT Medium, Doom Eternal RT. Now, um, uh, anyway, so, so uh, some of these games are certainly using... Uh, ray tracing, which is very interesting, and those are the places where it looks like they're getting the losses of the 7800 XT versus the RTX 4070. Now, again, this is where the price is going to be super interesting, because the 4070 uh, is, you know, $600. What is the 7800 XT going to be? Um, and, and how does all of this play out? So, um, 
Anyway, uh, overall, uh, it looks like the uh, videocards.com article has averaged these gaming results and says that on average that shows that it's 3.5% ahead of the 4070 in 1440p gaming with maximum settings. Um, and again, that is including some of these ray tracing results. Now, notably, games like Cyberpunk here don't say ray tracing enabled when that's one of the really heavy NVIDIA favored ray tracing titles. Well, this does say max settings, so you know, you could, you could quibble on some details, but here's the results and we will need some third-party reviews. Again, I would need to know the price to know how exciting this is gonna be. Uh, the 7700 XT, they're comparing against the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte. Now this is an interesting comparison result. For one thing, the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte is $500 versus the eight gigabyte version at $400. I'm curious what that means about the price point that the 7700 XT will be expected to be at. Uh, but anyway, here's the results. They're basically showing the 7700 XT uh, mopping the floor with the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte, uh, except for a couple uh, small ray tracing losses here. Again, I, I imagine if you looked at a game like Cyberpunk, you know, RT Ultra, it would probably take a larger loss, things like that. Again, think about the data set. But, um, you know, a lot of games are more in the console RT type uh, optimization where it's not super heavy RT. And in those cases, it looks like we are seeing um, some at least highs or even wins. So interesting stuff here. And so uh, if you average those results, it looks like the RX 7700 XT is 12% faster on average compared to the RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte. Now it would probably take it, uh, a, a slight increased advantage in certain games if you compared it to the eight gigabyte model. Um, because in certain games, like I, I know, for example, off this like Resident Evil 4, um, with uh, certain RT settings can spill over even 12 gigabytes of VRAM, things like that, but definitely go over eight. Uh, so again, uh, independent testing would be interesting here. Um, but those are the results we're getting leaked early. I'm very curious if the full announcement will have more. So that, uh, that's kind of what the overall specs look, look at here. We are expecting the cards in September, but again, in this leaked information, we don't have the specific price and the release date. Uh, so, you know, we'll have to wait till later today to hopefully get that information. Hopefully that is going to be included. Um, now FSR three. So, uh, again, videocards.com has a few slides leaked early here showing FSR three coming soon. And specifically, they're saying that it's going to include fluid motion frames. Um, so giving the idea that FSR 3 will indeed be something similar to DLSS 3 frame generation. Uh, in other words, it will be some kind of a motion interpolation uh, type of uh, result. Now, what's gonna be really interesting is how they deal with, you know, how does the image quality come out and how does the responsiveness come out? Notice it does say, anti-lag plus. So I'm wondering if they've done more to have a more direct competitor to NVIDIA's reflex technology, because one of the only reasons that um, frame generation uh, with NVIDIA is as usable as it is, even though it still does have a bit of a you know latency hit, is because of their reflex technology. So I'm curious what AMD has going with anti-lag plus uh, to make up for that. Also again, uh, even NVIDIA's frame generation features in many games, like the, my recently I tested uh, Immortals of Avium, had a lot of image quality bugs. Some games work really well, some games work less well. Um, so it'll be curious how we stack up on image quality here, because it's showing it boosting frame rate from 36 to 122. But again, um, that's from FSR off. And then, uh, you know, if you're using FSR three performance, you know, you'd probably just have the upscaling at the performance setting, and then you're kicking on the extra frames uh, from the fluid motion. But FSR at, at its current mode, like using the upscaling at the performance mode, generally the image quality isn't all that great, especially compared to DLSS at the same performance setting. So I'm again, also curious if the super resolution piece of this has, has um, gained any increased visual quality, uh, uh, not uh, just the uh, increased fluid motion frames. And how does it all play out? Again, we will have to find out. The announced games are Forspoken as well as Immortals of Avium. 
So the thing about these two games, first of all, it's kind of interesting. They're both kind of games where you have some magic thing on your arm. And I don't know if that's what they were looking for when they decided uh, they just wanted a game where you shoot magic out of your arm for uh, being a really good match for FSR 3. But it is where they're at. Anyway, um, I... <sighs> You know, for Spoken, not, neither of these games seem to have made a, a huge splash. Uh, you know, we'll see how Immortals of Avium goes. Immortals of Avium is interesting, at least uh, because it's a Unreal Engine 5.1 game with a lot of that feature set. And DLSS 3 frame generation did not look good at launch, if you look at my test video, where, like, the targeting reticle had a lot of ghosting and things like that. So it will be interesting. Um, you know, yeah, again, see how the image quality plays out on this. Uh, but again, I have a lot of questions here about how how usable will this be? It's got a good frame rate boost number attached to it, but what will the actual image quality and response be like? That remains to be seen, but I am excited to see them still talking about it. But again, uh, this seems to just say coming soon. Um, it doesn't have a release date here. We'll see if um, in the actual full video, AMD gives an actual release date to that. And again, it looks like the other information we have here is uh, uh, a look at some of the cooler models that they're showing off. Um, however, it looks like, um, according to the videocards.com article, the uh, 7700 XT will just be released as AIB partner cards, and there won't be an official made by AMD reference model. Um, but the 7800 XTs will have both. All right, that's what I've got for you guys until uh, we know more. So if the full video, uh, you know, late, uh, that's expected later today gives us pricing and release dates, I'll have a lot more thoughts for you on the actual value of these things. But hey, I got you a sneak peek for now, and I've got some things to do anyway. So I hope you guys have an excellent day.